Action begins right here. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord is bottom. Um, uh, what is today? The first. first. July first, mm -hmm. two thousand and two. Priority tour number four. Uh, this tour, this priority tour, is going to be fairly short because we don't have such interesting samples as I learned, and also because we're in a hurry to finish what we're doing, and. Um, uh, so we'll just get on to uh, the, the samples because we have spoken in the past so much about the, all these areas, about the kitchen. This sample, we start with the kitchen sample that comes from where exactly? Ah, mm. oh, this is from the this is from the cash. It's from the cash. One from the cash and one from the kitchen. And one around the other. Okay, so let's go. Well, let's start with the cash. Um, it was our obsidian case. 46. Yeah. 46. 84, 46. Okay. So I think we should start with uh, Heidi because this is right mm -hmm. up her alley. Well, yeah. Um, there were four pieces of obsidian and two pieces of flint. And both the flint pieces seem to be of the same kind. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> one of them was a core fragment, the other one was a flake. Um, a very little core fragment. Mm -hmm. And there was a bifaced obsidian blank, which is quite similar to all the other obsidian blanks they get with the other caches and holes. So that was quite exciting. And then there were a couple of flakes. Wasn't there another half of the biface? No, no, it was. It, it was, was a whole one, yeah. and then I thought there was another. There was a half of the single thing. No, there, there was a big chunk of flake, uh -huh. um, okay. which I'm not quite sure whether it was part of a core or it was an attempt okay. to make a biface on that as well. And then there were plenty of. Microdebitages, really? Yeah. So is this microdebitage from the cache uh, in any way different uh, than um, other microdebitages? No, I don't think so. But there were tons of pieces mm. compared to what we usually get. More than we usually yeah, get? Yeah, much more than we usually get. So what would this mean? Would this mean that when they are taking out these uh, blank pieces to use them, they were putting. They were putting back the Yeah, they, they, they could position. have done that. They could easily have swapped it up and put it down in the hole to get it out of the way. Ah. Okay. Okay. So, how about plants? Um, it's very interesting. It's very small context and just how much liter? Nineteen liters was a sample that, but. With wood, it's high density, and without wood, moderate density. Mm -hmm. um, there's a thousands of wood pieces, and it seems to me it's all the same kind of wood. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and there is uh, lots of more edible plant remains, mm -hmm. such as cereals, pulse, uh, except wood. There's, uh, and they are in mixed conditions, some of them they are in good conditions. And uh, lots of uh, wild seeds, especially <coughs> Tribunella types, it's, which is wild legume. Wild legume? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very interesting, it's hard to say anything, but it looks like they through from maybe kitchenery because kitchenery always is very clean. So, but is this typical? It sounds like it, uh, the type of deposits that, that should be typical for kitchen areas, right? Because yeah. <coughs> yeah, it's, it's yeah. kitchen area, actually, but, but more wood. Yes. But wood, yeah. uh, if wood is used as fuel, why not? Why not find more wood in that area as well? But in the kitchen areas, 
I think in general the kitchen area has been very empty of plant life yeah. and very yeah. clean. Mm -hmm. So this is a lot more than we usually find. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, this actually I think was our, uh, the, the rake out <coughs> from around the oven. Uh, wasn't it, Dragona? It was rake out. It was the ashy organic material around uh, the yeah. oven yeah. below the floor. Yeah. So this could have been the material taken out of the oven and put around before the... Oh, I'm sorry, you're talking about the cache. Yes, the cache. What's wrong with me? You're talking about the cache, so that's really unusual to yeah, have in the cache so many edible plants. Very high density plant remains and lots of wood mm -hmm. and lots of edible plant remains, wild plants, wild legumes. Hmm. Yeah, uh, well, the fill of that cache was a little unusual. It didn't show on the surface. It, it didn't show all of this that you're talking about. It was really a sort of dryish and, and crumbly and, uh, type of soil, and it didn't look like very rich, organic rich deposits. So I'm also surprised. Maybe it was a, a layer that was at the bottom of it. However, we must. Uh, also say that there, at the bottom of that cash cut, we are touching, most likely touching the middle. Yeah. We are just yeah. above the middle, <coughs> so that stuff, Maybe. it's difficult to say whether it belongs to the middle or it was just the cash field. Um, okay, any bones from the cash? Oh, yes, in fact, this is the only interesting unit from this yes. story. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, maybe um, those bones uh, are related uh, to the position and that is near the exit of the house. Uh, I wonder whether it is possible mm -hmm. uh, that uh, remains that were on the floor, mm -hmm. floors um, in fact, were swept there. Mm -hmm. uh, the unit is uh, interesting because it has many fish bones. In fact, uh, uh, much more uh, remains, uh, fish remains than in any unit in the house, in any place in the house. And maybe that is an answer. They were just, uh, uh, especially fish uh, remains, which are not pleasant to stay <laughs> in totally the house. Yeah. Yes. They were swapping them, and maybe they accumulated there. So you um, excavated excavators are there to say whether that is uh, possible. Now, why and do you, why do you think that they are not so pleasant to live on the floor? Think because they smell bad. And they stick in your feet. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that so? Fish bones. Why would fish not bones? fish bones? Be? Fish remains. Uh -huh. Sometimes the, I mean, they were fish. Uh, they ate, uh, ate fish and uh, uh -huh. after that uh, it is unpleasant smell and you uh -huh. have to swipe it uh -huh. out mm -hmm. to <laughs> clean okay. the house out of it. And um, all the uh, fish remains uh, okay. of characteristic color, dark brown, okay. so they are, they are uh, contemporary to mm -hmm. say they are from one uh, level and uh, there are many fish vertebra and the uh, fish vertebra has, have um, processes which are very fragile and all of them are broken um, so uh, all the fish uh, bones are fragile anyhow mm -hmm. and uh, what is more there is almost nothing of uh, large mammals just uh, again few rodent bones some of them fresh some of them one uh, tooth was uh, burnt so it is also mm -hmm. within unit Mm -hmm. It is contemporary. <coughs> and, uh, there was uh, one uh, tooth row of a fish which is so large for this site. <laughs> I mean, what I have seen out of fish mm -hmm. is because mostly uh, we have uh, fish which are, um, for example, 5 or 10 centimeters oh, long, okay. and this one is maybe 20 centimeters. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah, well, that concentration of fish bones is interesting. I, it'd be easy to say that it is also part of the midden, and this is the place where they trash, where they threw uh, fish bones. But if they come from different type of fish, and if there are a lot of them, we can think about maybe not just one event of throwing fish 
bonds in one place in the middle, and then it would mean that they were trying always fish in the same spot on the middle, in the middle. So it's more likely than that it is a fill of the um, of the cut. Oh well, but the dilemma will remain. Um, yeah, so that was that, and then the next unit that we had from the kitchen is what I have been talking about already is the material that was deposited around the oven uh, between the two floors, which is a rake, typical rake-out material, and it's ashy gray stuff with uh, pieces of charcoal and other remains. So, I just quickly, maybe when you um, do remove the rest of the kitchen floor, it would be good to have a, a, a sample that's specifically from that area so we can compare it. Excellent point, <coughs> so we can compare it. Excellent. Yes, we will do that. Okay. Sample has a low density, mm -hmm. uh, mostly wood. This sample shows similarity with the upper units, which, which we saw last year. Mm -hmm. All the samples from the kitchen area, which we looked so far, is very similar. And these units look uh, have low density in terms of plant remains, always. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is not usual, because normally we, we as, uh, expect to have high density of plant material in a <coughs> fire installation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know, it's just there's a li very little pulse, such as peas, mm -hmm. and some lentils, some cereal fragments, and different uh, wild seeds, most of them scarpus. Mm -hmm. And according to this information, it, you can say they're cleaning this area very often. And Did you have any bones? Like no, almost done. We no. were just no. few fragments. Okay, and then uh, any? Did you get a chance to look at it? Yeah, um, but it's 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 15 pieces from a flotation, and that's general background noise. Mm. So is it? No, I don't. Is it generally the density that we get? Or is yeah, it, it's it's quite common. Mm. And all small flakes. Yeah, there we go. So nothing special, okay, typical, typical boring kitchen stuff. <laughs> uh, we don't like that. Well, any. Okay, let's move to Tanya. We are moving now to your space, <laughs> former space. And it, it was the, a unit that was supposed to be something like the the previously lost unit, right? Yes. <laughs> so we were trying to get... Uh, we, it was a unit from the uh, southwest part of the space, right? Southwest, more in that corner where the majority, where there was material, real fill material. No? Yes, which one? Uh, that part A3, A3. A3, A3. It's uh, for the whole surface. Oh, it was from the whole... Uh -huh. Uh -huh. From it the was the upper service. unit, yes. It was, uh -huh. it was above 8405, 8406. And so 8405, I think, was lost yeah. before. Six. Six. Or 6 was six. lost before, and so this unit <coughs> is a replacement for that, in a sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do, did we have there? Anything interesting? For plant remains, the sample had a low density with wood and without wood, and it was mostly wood. Um, so it also had um, some cereals in poor conditions. Poor conditions? Yeah, very poor. <coughs> and uh, seeds, some wild seeds, including uh, gallium and scorpus, which are... What is gallium? That's a... It's a... a uh, red straw, red straw. Weeds and usually grows with the cereals. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, so come in the crops. And scorpus, which is the marshy plant, and uh, a little bit of uh, lentil, lint. But it uh, seems to be a pretty common for fell, very low, you know, low density, low diversity, 
not very much besides wood and a little bit of cereal. Mm -hmm. And in comparison with 8405, which was the um, unit below it to the east, mm -hmm. uh, they basically have the same kinds of material and the same um, proportions, mm -hmm. but uh, 8405 had a higher density. Mm -hmm. Okay, so not really nothing special to say about. Well, the reason we wanted to re revisit this kind of, this unit is because uh, in terms of the previous unit, in terms of the fauna or material, was very interesting, and it showed a lot of difference from um, what we normally find. And so we wanted just to see whether the plant material would show also anything special. It didn't, right? So that plant material is typical. So did you look at that uh, as well again? Yes, and there are additional evidences that um, uh, wild species are quite frequent. In fact, um, there was a roe deer um, uh, phalanx and uh, wild boar atlas, which uh, comes from a young animal. Mm -hmm. And then in the same time that these uh, are evidences, because they are coming from young animals, they, they were thrown fresh into the space. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, maybe you can tell us now, uh, what do you think, uh, whether that space was open? <coughs> or trash. Yeah, I, I don't think uh, my particular opinion has not changed since, since the last time. I think that the space was deliberately filled as a structure in the for a structure reason to retain some movement here in the corner and it was filled in the beginning with a lot of uh, really positive <coughs> um, building material plus and then gradually things were thrown in it was open or par mm -hmm. partially uh, partially open and things like food remains and, and other rubbish sort of thing were thrown in. Um, so that's my feeling about it. There is nothing to really tell us that um, this was a specially used space and then closed later on. And so it, it's, it's a kind of a midden, but not typical midden. It's just an open area that's almost full but there is still space to throw in some things before. What about you, Tanya? Yeah, I'm very agree. You so. think yeah. you have that feeling? Okay. They have used it for, for such purposes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like there's lots of individual dumping because there weren't layers of different kinds of material. It seems mm -hmm. pretty same kind of fill all the way through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, but, but there were layers of those large, large yeah, bones. It was sort of a layer, they were all in group, right? <coughs> and um, maybe it was, um, it was filled uh, through a rather short period of time. Mm -hmm. Well, several different episodes, mm -hmm. events, throwing and mm -hmm. such, something like that, but not in a very long span of time. And right. that is why the feel is somehow similar to ours. Except for a little bit of difference, such as those big bones and yeah, and, the and that's lines. what was on the top. Uh, it is possible that they needed uh, such a space to throw building materials. Maybe they have cleaned another area mm -hmm. and they need a place to <coughs> put this. Mm -hmm. So they just uh, had this separated. Mm -hmm or separated in on purpose because mm -hmm. of this and just put the material. They, they just mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, took I, it from another place and put it there. Yeah, I think, I, I think uh, yeah, I, I agree with most of that, but not completely. I don't think they would have um, sacrificed part of the house in order to, uh, to create a place to dump material. I think this, this corner had already been mm -hmm. For other reasons, yeah. designated as a corner that's not going to be used for living anymore, and therefore then it yeah. becomes a place for trash. Okay, shall we now move to space 87? And this was um, a burial field? And 88. 88. Oh, we had something from 88. Okay, okay. okay. <coughs> you didn't have any. Do you have any 88? No.
Which one? The one that they, the people chose for priority. Eight, four, six, six. Yes, right. What was that? What was that black uh, layer? Ah, uh, okay. Let's see that with shells. Yeah, with shells. Oh, that's right. We had a number of shells lying in a, in a black and uh, organically rich layer. That's right. And uh, we generally, we are we're still very confused about the Space 88. We have a right now on a, a surface that is like working surface or floor surface, even though it's not a typical floor for Chatterquick uh, houses. And this unit that we will discuss now comes from uh, above that layer. It comes from eroded uh, sort of other layers and or, or such layers and building materials all mixed up and that one that one circle that was about this large uh, was um, different from everything around it by being really thick black deposits of organic material okay let's see what's in in, in there um, this is several this had incredible amounts of wood it had a very high density with wood Mm -hmm. For example, high density starts when you have uh, one gram of material per liter, mm -hmm. and this had 9.8 grams, so it, was, so it was pure wood only. Yeah, it was almost pure wood, and also there was a lot of wood in the 4 and 2 millimeter fractions, which uh, is important because it usually gets broken up to much smaller pieces. It was over 2,000 pieces in just the 4 and 2 millimeter. Mm -hmm. uh, and the wood also appears to be in very good condition. It hasn't, it's not very um, worn. Mm -hmm. So it probably was burnt and then deposited straight away without being moved around very much. Mm -hmm. um, besides wood, there's just very little other material. But there are some lentil, uh, some pulse, including uh, chickpeas. Yes, really oh, nice pulse. Yes, nice. I've never found them in a yeah, sample before. before. This oh time. my god. And so it was in, mixed with wood? Yeah. Two chickpeas and uh, some lentil and some another kind of uh, pulse called vikia. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was the second uh, most frequent material. And then there was a little bit, very little cereal, very little chaff, and uh, just a couple of wild seeds. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Now, could this be all remains from? from a, a fire, from a, an oven, like, uh, you know, they made a fire and there was this wood remains and then they were um, uh, cooking these or baking these um, plants and then they cleaned up the whole thing. Yeah. And could that be it? But why would they put just it? Just one, one event. Right, one cooking event. But why would they put it in this space? 88, well, we don't have any scorching on the soil. It, it's obviously it was not um, in, in situ position. It was well, not the burning right there. It wasn't burning right there. Well, there, 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 there was some red soil. I mean, there is some red soil in, in this uh, layer here, but I don't think it's connected to this kind of burning and it wouldn't mm -hmm. produce probably this kind of. I'm, I'm not sure really. Mm -hmm. But um, it was lying on a, on a layer of packing that was lying on top of this floor mm -hmm. uh, that we see now. Mm -hmm. So it was sort of leveled, it, leveled uh, this floor and several lenses of different floors and then this layer mm. that was distinctive. Um, and it can, because of these shells were found on approximately the same level across the space, mm -hmm. but only in this part the concentration was of charred remains with, mm -hmm. with this kind of burning. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm. actually I have no idea. But, and I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't consistent, so you can actually see um, the, it was like a plank that was burnt or anything like that. It, it, these were wood remains, but kind of in, in chops and uh, mm -hmm. like ch charcoal was, was. Could you say if they were different for the types? Uh, types or no? No. 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 Okay. okay. There would be a good sample for any questions. Those are large pieces. The, um, we, we have still a lot, so we'll yeah, I, I, yeah. I left the full yeah, bag yeah. of yeah. five minutes. There's also some larger pieces you might want to do. For dendro. Oh, good, good. Uh, definitely, we want from that dendro as much as possible. Okay. Um, so, uh, so yes, it is. It's little. It is unusual. It's difficult to explain what in this. If we are right, that this is a <coughs> sort of industrial part, uh, 
room, room in which a lot of activities of making things went on, mm -hmm. but making in terms of grinding, because all we found is grinding stone, we found some bone, we found pigment remains, we found a lot of grinding stones, right? remember? Yeah, and yeah, higher yeah. up, this, was, this whole space was, has been dedicated to, it seems, grinding activities, and there, there was a platform that was used maybe also for working on because the whole, the entire surface of the pl platform was eroded completely through use, it was, most likely. And it was truncated at the end, and but truncated. yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, was, it was also, the, f the packing of the platform was with uh, mm -hmm. some pieces of, uh, of grinding stone. Mm -hmm. And I mean, even in that sort of, uh, I don't know, possible opening to, to, the, to, the, to that space, there's mm -hmm. that grinding stone still there in situ. So. Right, right. Um, and the, uh, one thing that I can say while I was excavating it is that uh, it was sort of uh, below it and above uh, this uh, layer of black uh, tread remains. It, uh, it, this, was, this was a fairly sterile packing mm -hmm. uh, and kind of leveling. So it might have been that they just kind of threw, threw this uh, kind of thing and then... Uh, used put it as packing and mm -hmm. put it... But uh, yes, that I would go with that, except that it's very unusual in the sense of why would you in, in this room throw something like that as packing? Because they used for packing in the same room, they used a lot of clay, mm -hmm. this sandy clay, Absolutely. and sandy clay bricks. And the whole fill is made of that, and now suddenly you have this thick layer of something black that yeah. was uh, thrown in as packing. That's a little unusual. But uh, I must say there are also remains of some other features possibly here, something like a bin that we have right now in the corner that's made of brown clay material that, uh, that's very damaged, very, very damaged is this stuff here. It could have been a bin. Um, so it, this could have been uh, switching functions, this room. At one stage could, could have been a, a, a storing of organic material, materials and maybe even grinding those. At another stage, later on, it could have been used not for organic materials anymore, but for something inorganic, such as grinding pigments and stuff. Or oh, those two activities uh, were you know, practiced together in the same space. I have something to say about okay. activities, too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and burns. Let's go back now. Yeah. Let's go back to the beginning. <laughs> well, there are, no, <laughs> there are no many constant fragments of mammal bones here in terms of species or such things, but there are two bone tools. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, one bone tool, which is uh, point tip, which is broken, and uh, just a small uh, tip of it, but the break is old. Mm -hmm. And the burning is interesting in this piece because it is a special kind of burning when the bone is covered with something and then <coughs> it's, uh, it was... Uh, Brings uh, in that way. Yes, it? yes, because of the characteristic uh, polish on the surface. So that is one uh, fact. And another is that there is another, not really bone tool, but um, uh, bone uh, fragment which is uh, discarded after the tool was made. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is um, a clear piece and also have uh, all the breaks. So mm -hmm. maybe you should think also about some activities. Uh, which are related to um, mm, something which is uh, done by uh, bone tools. Uh -huh. And you should think about whether those two uh, items are redeposited or more, more, more probably they were there for some mm -hmm. reason. Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't look like redeposited at all. Mm -hmm. That uh, preform is larger than any other piece of bone. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Mm, that uh, a small point uh, uh, tip also shouldn't be re redeposited, and you don't have any other signs of redepositing mm -hmm. materials. So, mm -hmm. no, I don't. I, I, my feeling. I don't know about you, Dusha, but my feeling about that space is that very little of redeposited material is there. Mm -hmm. It's mostly in situ, except at the top layer. Uh, which we also excavated this year, was still heavily eroded and mixed. I mean, what we can see here is the thin layers of these surfaces that all look very much the same, which all have this black 
uh, layer on top and they have gray and they have a lot of uh, the white specks. And, um, and uh, we can see that they're very densely packed and, and they're always, the building material is always the sandy brick, right? They're all the same color. It's mm -hmm. like, it's a, it seems that it, this, these activities that we have uh, gone through in these layers are all in a very short time period because you see the repetition of the same. And it's very dense and very compact, and that that would typical be typical also for a working area where you do a lot of yeah, work. lots of uh, lots of trampling and uh, then then kind of damage at a certain point of of, of this uh, floor space and then repair of that, mm -hmm. and then it's all sort of irregular. So it wasn't very easy to follow that sort of surface. But then, uh, then there are lots of uh, uh, the only way to distinguish is actually this kind of salts that appear on the mm -hmm. on the on the first surface on the floor surface. So it's again a possibility that uh, with, with, with traces also of phytoliths and reeds and stuff. So again, mm -hmm. would indicate sort of uh, activity of um, mm -hmm. some sort. So. Okay. So did you have any? Uh, don't do no. 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 Actually, no. Because only in this layer <coughs> that I excavated now of yesterday, or above this floor, which was uh, actually the layer of uh, floors above it. Uh, there, there were there were some pieces of obsidian mm -hmm. that I could collect, but not in the in the in the upper mm -hmm. layer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we had another unit from the very Is it two more? Two more units. Okay. Eight, four, six, seven. Do you remember what? Eight, four, six, seven is the floor and the packing, and eight, four, eight, oh. Is that the other one? Yeah. The burial. No. Yes. Okay. So should, do we we do floor first, right? We had to remove uh, floor number one in the space 87 in order to uncover uh, an additional burial cut and that we couldn't see from floor uh, from the first floor. So we, we removed the top floor with its packing. It was fairly thick packing, about two centimeters at places had a pure sand as packing, right, Laurie? Pure sand. And at, at the top, it had just regular white plaster. Yes. It's it was regular white plaster, and it was that um, brown packing, and it followed the slope so that it made it even. So uh, the very t um, the northern part, it was maybe not even a centimeter, and by the time we got over to the southern part, it was six centimeters. In terms right. of so it was the floor was uh, a very much built in relation to the burial cut. After the burial cut, there, there had to be a leveling of the floor, and on, that's why on the on the side where the burial cut is, we have these much thicker deposits and packing <coughs> than on the other end. Okay, so what do we have there? Uh, sample uh, has a moderate density with wood, low density without wood. Um, the sample doesn't uh, have too much clutch, it's mostly wood. Some cereals and chop in bad conditions. Uh, some almond shells and a few herbaceous material. But the sample is rich in terms of the white seeds, which is some white legume and polygonums, corpus, marshy plants. Mm -hmm. uh, when we compare this field with the two burial fields, mm -hmm. Uh, this is the floor, you're still talking about the floor. Right? Yeah, you're yeah. talking about the floor, right? Yeah. yeah. Floor and the packing. Yeah. Right. And then, yeah, we were comparing it to the fill, 8421 and 4 that night. 8421, yeah. yeah. It's quite similar with 8421, this two. Yeah. Yeah. Both samples have the same kind of plant and almost same amount. Mm. Would you really wouldn't expect a barrel to have exactly, the, I mean, something similar to flora and packing? Unless they were built at the same time. I mean, not built, but the burial was filled with a filling, and then the floor was put on top of it and using the same material for packing. Mm -hmm. Which makes sense, because yeah. we do assume that they once they cut a, a bury, made a burial cut and buried somebody, they had to put a new floor on top and, and conceal those, those could be to work the similar material. Yeah, it's quite different from the other burials. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, different than 
But the, bar the other burial uh, was, the burial cut was made from the... It was from the previous, in, in fact, for A3, A5, we'd expect it to be similar to the floor above it, or the, around it, which is A275. We'd expect the same thing. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's good. So we have a nice uh, indirect evidence that uh, the floor was built um, immediately when the burial was uh, took place. Yeah, that's good. Anything else? Yes, uh, well, there are some uh, uh, mammal, uh, medium-sized mammal fragments, which are not so important, because it is said that the animal burrowed itself, so there and probably these bones came into the unit like that. But there was also one uh, broken ring, which is also probably a broken ring. ring. Oh, ring? Yes, yeah. yeah, a small oh, one. A small one. And uh, Do you know what the animal is made out of? What did you ask? The animal the thing is made out of? Uh, no, not exactly. Yeah. No, medium. Probably, uh, medium, yeah, medium. It's probably sheep goat. Mm -hmm. It's of that size. Mm -hmm. Sheep goat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's the child eating animal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a new species. It's called sheep goat. Obviously, it's a bit of breeding. Yeah. Nothing. Anything else? Nothing else. And the micro. Vertebrates, which are not very important. There is a frog bone. A frog bone? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's cool. We've got a French thing going over here. <laughs> frog, frog buttocks. <laughs> yes. Anything tiny? Um, there were about four to nine pieces. Very small, right? Yeah, most of them quite small. And, and that is quite usual for both bone and pack. I'm sorry, a frog bone was better. <laughs> <laughs> and nothing else. Okay, that was it. In the burial field. That's all you got. Well, some yeah. few microbes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and their packings. Um, because it was all mixed up. We can see that they existed in proper layers, only at the, at the edges in where they went into the walls. But right in the middle, we couldn't follow them um, as proper layers. So it was mixed up. Uh, what else shall we, shall we take? Is there anything on the other end? Nobody's listening to me. Ruthie, yeah. anything yeah. interesting in your uh, domain? <laughs> no, we don't have anything yet, maybe later for this cut. We'll do the cut. Yeah, next time we'll do the, that cut. But that will be mostly mid material, as I can see from yeah, here. Yeah, except the top two layers. The uh -huh. top two layers would be interesting to take it from. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay, let's go there. And then you want to see. This is another. This is another. Fades of the same feature. Talking about this thing? Yes. Mm, I knew it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what happened here, this oven was in here before, and then later this um, ash collector feature was added, and it was that feature was built in the way that they, fer they brought almost the entire half or oven floor from another place. And they put it in here as a foundation. And then on top of that, they had a layer of just brown, or regular light brown, almost beige color clay was put on top of it, sealing this whole thing into one nice feature that was uh, attached here and there, attached to the other. So when we removed that layer on, from on top, we saw that there are remains of almost the entire <coughs> oven, or I mean half, lying right on top of this floor. This is not in situ, I mean it wasn't, it is in situ, but it wasn't built originally here. We know because it really is not attached to any floors, it doesn't flow from any floors, it's just sitting on top of this floor. And we can see the traces of burning on it, and we can see that there is a real oven uh, floor, but uh, heavily damaged. And so this, it's not unusual that they use old ovens and hearts as foundation. Um, in terms of having that as a priority sample, I'm not sure. We can give it to you. Yeah, we'll give it to you, even though it seems fairly Burn and not reaching anything. Oh, first class transport. We have a little tour. Question eight five two five eight five two five. And uh, is there any dry seal material? Problem. Uh, I think there will not be. We're still excavating it. I think there will not be. I think the whole thing will go into rotation. So no dry seal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's give them seven seventy eight. Okay, we'll give you another sample, so, and the unit number is this one. No, no, that's, that's the floor around. Do you want the floor around the oven, or? Ah, oh, no, the, we want the inside. The floors. Okay. Um. So that unit will be um, the, the, the floors and the, the base of the... This fire installation right here. <laughs> 8501. Uh, 8501 is the first floor. 8504 is the rim of the other. And 8507 is the second floor. So, <laughs> 8501, first floor of the other. 
8504 is the range, and 8507 is the, the second floor. Special force. <laughs> Uh, that, that's probably um, all we have to offer right now in terms of priorities. Can you give them another priority? <laughs> Can you take another priority? Yes, of course. 8518. 8518. That's just the southern part of the, of the space. 8518. Again, space uh, 88, 88. Uh, southern part. Yeah. Southern part. Southern. So you will have a central part and southern part of the same space, basically. Uh, similar remains and northern part. Above the floor, above this. this <laughs> floor. He's, he calls it northern, except it will be precise. Okay, it will be central and southern. Do you have dry seed? <laughs> yes. I mean, will really it have Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Obsidian and, and uh, gold as well. This, no. no, no. You like dry seed. No, they don't. They don't, they don't but oh. they need to find that material. Oh, I see. To join yes. the rest of the oh, yes. Yes. in order yes. to have a complete picture of the, of the unit. Not to look uh, for it if there is no. Right. Yeah. Okay, so that concludes our session today. Bye bye. <laughs> Tune in next time, next week. Next week. Next Monday. When? 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 So we can do it on Saturday or Sunday. That's almost a week. We used to do it twice a week, remember, in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Do it on Saturday. There are three of you. All right, so how about Saturday? Is that too soon? It's really dry. Okay, let, let's say technically Saturday. If it turns out that it's not, you're not still ready, then we'll move to Sunday. Hmm. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. 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 The priority <laughs> team, including Michael Bolter, <laughs> who is following the priority team. <laughs> Michael, is there anything to say about our priority? How do you like our priority tour? I'll let you know when 2004 my book comes out. Oh, <laughs> that's not fair. We have to yes. wait for your word. Oh, no, no, we gotta, we got to vet it first. Excellent, excellent priority. <laughs> <laughs> okay.